Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on great carpentry content. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make your own rustic barn beams. Now, one of the first questions you're gonna to have to ask yourself is what material you wanna to use to make your barn beams. And I've found by far the best material to use is a number two pine material. It's gonna be knotty, but most importantly, it's gonna be very soft and that's gonna make hewing it with the broad ax and other machines that we're gonna use much easier and it's gonna distress really nicely. Another characteristic is the soft growth rings. We're gonna hit those later with a wire brush wheel machine and those are also gonna give a nice weathered look and it's not gonna take a lot of effort to remove that pulpy growth ring material like it would with a material like say white oak or something like that. So my go-to is number two pine. It also helps, it's very inexpensive comparatively. So um, definitely a great material to start with. All right, so end of day, I've got all of my beams glued up. I just kind of keep uh, clamping, assemble some beams, remove the clamps, put them on the next set. Got a long day of distressing ahead of me on Monday. Over here, got my barn beam mantle miter folded and my newel post for my stair. The first step that I like to start out with when distressing beams is to use the Festool planer with the undulating head. And if you're not familiar with that planer, check it out. I'll have links in the notes below, but it's just a planer with a rounded blade that works more as like a scoop instead of a typical straight planer blade. Whenever it comes to technique with using the Festool planer, it's really pretty simple. Just think in your head, you're just trying to give the beam surface a little bit of extra texture than what it would take with a broad ax. You could in theory do it all with the broad ax, but it would be much more labor intensive. And if you put on too many hits with the broad ax, it tends to be too busy. So the Festool planer kind of scoops out material with this undulating head and just gives it a nice um, textured surface. One of the other reasons I like to use the Festool planer as a part of my process for distressing is to me it's the best tool to use for corners, for rounding over the corners a little bit and making it look like an actual barn beam, but at the same time you don't want to have a super sharp corner. So the way I can hit those corners with this planer makes it go really fast and it's a lot more effective for me than using a hand tool. The other thing you want to keep in mind from a technique perspective with distressing beams is this is a process that we're going to do in layers. So first I like to hit it with a planer, then we're going to go to broad axe, then we're going to put some cracks in the beams with a Dremel tool, then we're going to burn them, and then we're going to hit them with a wire brush wheel tool made by Makita. After I'm done hitting it with the Festool planer, I get out the broad axe. The broad axe is by far the most important part of the process on distressing these beams. It's gonna give it those hand-hewn marks that are gonna give it that realistic look as if it was actually hand-hewn back in the day. So, very important part of the process. Hey guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button. It helps me out and drop a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. Make sure you hang around to the end. We're gonna take a peek at an authentic barn built with barn beams and get a little bit more in depth and take a look at why we're doing some of these things the way we are trying to match that look. Now, something to consider is that the real men of days of old, whenever they would be hewing beams, they were skilled in their craft and it was not just randomly smacking a board. There was a rhythm in a pattern and a process to what they were doing. So whenever you're making these marks in a beam, such as with a broad ax, there is a rhythm and a pattern that you wanna use. They would be using an efficient pattern also as they were forming these logs into square beams. So keep that in mind as you're making these distress marks. As you can see here, this is a broad ax I just got done using and you can see how it peeled up the, that pine wood, and now it's kind of sitting kind of high and raised. 
after that, I like to take a Fisker's axe and pop those pieces off. I find it's easier to use a smaller Fisker's axe like this than it is to use the broad axe itself again. The Fisker's axe just kind of digs in and uh, just works really well for me. But I will have this broad axe and the Fisker's axe listed in the notes with the video if you're interested in that. You can see the technique is kind of just hitting those pieces that are popped up and that rips those uh, pieces of wood off um, and, and it gives it that barn beam look. So it's very labor intensive, but you just kind of go after it and it goes pretty well. You can kind of see here as I'm using this broad axe, there is a pattern. You kind of go up, down, up, down, and the spacing in between strikes is fairly similar and I think that yields the best look. So then here's another view with the Fisker's axe popping these pieces off. You can see you just kind of flatten your blade out and um, forcefully push it along with, with the um, plane of the board and it'll pop those pieces right off. Sometimes you dig in a little bit and kind of pop a, a, a larger loose piece off, but all in all this, this works really well for me. When it comes to the size of the, the axe or the broad axe that you're using, I have actually used uh, Fisker's axes that are this size before for the whole process. But looks wise, I think that wider blade that I have on this broad axe that I was using previously gives a much better look. But then using the smaller axe to pop the pieces off is a lot easier than uh, trying to push that big heavy broad axe around all day. Back in the day when building barns from timbers, you would be using wet lumber to build those barns. So you'd have wet logs, you'd be hewing them into square logs, and then as that barn would be assembled and things would dry out, you'd end up with these beautiful large cracks in the beams as the beams would dry out. So that's an important part of the process also is to really add some nice cracks in these beams to make them look authentic. I've used a lot of different tools to make these cracks, um, some large chisels, uh, knives, all kinds of different things. But the tool I found that works the best is this Dremel and it's got a small cutting wheel on it and it's the least labor intensive way to do it and it gives you a lot of ability to make narrower cracks or wider cracks and flare them out and all kinds of different things. So this is the tool that I really like using to make the cracks in the beams. From a design perspective, generally my viewpoint is that the cracks are an essential part of making these beams, but you don't wanna overdo the cracks. Um, they add a lot to the beam, but you don't wanna have cracks all over the place or it's just too much. So here and there, again, trying to make them look authentic as possible. Now we're getting closer to the end of the process. One of the problems you have with distressing beams this way is it creates a whole bunch of nasty splinters and torn wood and stuff that's still hanging onto the beam and it's not going to work to have that on there if you're going to try and stain and finish these things. So I hit my beams with a torch. This works really well. It burns up all those little nasty pieces of wood and it also kind of creates an effect where it burns the top of the wood and I feel like then whenever you hit it with a wire brush wheel, it makes those soft growth rings easier to remove with the wire brush wheel. So again, later on we're gonna remove the uh, pulpy wood that is softer with that wire wheel and I think the burning aspect of this process really helps with that also. And last but not least in the process is the Makita wire brush machine. This is a fantastic machine. It's got a nice wide wire brush wheel that works really well for removing that burnt wood, kind of sands it, smooths it out, and then it reaches really deep into the growth rings and removes that soft pulpy wood, which is the same effect that weather has on wood that is outdoors. So if you go up alongside an old barn that has wood siding, look at that siding and you'll notice that it's got a kind of a rough texture and you can actually see the growth rings 
and those softer growth rings will be removed by the weather and it's deeper and that's that old worn barn wood look that we want to go for all right guys so i actually have a really old barn back behind my house so i thought i'd just come out here and show you what i'm talking about you can see the depth of the texture on this old barn wood siding you can see how the weather has removed that soft growth ring and uh, it's got kind of a it's just got a unique texture where those hard growth rings remain and those soft growth rings that pulp is removed from this siding so that's the look that we're going for whenever we're trying to use that wire brush wheel so now getting even a little bit more in depth you can see this is an old barn and it's been framed with um, the native timbers that were hand hewn and you can see these same marks so let's take a closer look again you'll see how those soft growth rings have weathered and kind of deteriorated and it's got that rough texture you also notice those hewing marks here sporadically where these logs were chopped um, from round logs into square logs so whenever i'm making my barn beams i'm really trying to imitate what's going on here and try and get that same look you know as authentically as possible but also realizing that i'm not i have to do it in an efficient way so it's not going to be exact but you know trying to get it as close as possible as always guys i really appreciate the support for the channel appreciate all the hits on the like button as well as the subscribers um, definitely visit the affiliate links in the notes that are with every video visiting those links for the tools that i use helps support the channel and if you want to see any of the tools that i was using to make these beams they're listed in the notes so this is the finished house where these beams were installed they don't have any finish on them yet but i can't wait to see it with some stain i think it's going to look great so hope you enjoyed the video we'll see you next time